Have you been hurt in a relationship by a narcissist? Are you sick of falling for the same men, always ending up emotionally broken and beaten down? Did you realize though that it's actually possible to spot a narcissist before he even has an opportunity to ruin your life? Which is why on today's show, we're going to be discussing seven clues to spot the narcissist early. That way, you can protect yourself and prevent yourself from being emotionally damaged by the next man who's looking to take advantage of you. First things first, we're going to pull up Google and we're going to read out the definition of a narcissist. Narcissist personality disorder is a personality disorder characterized by a lifelong pattern of exaggerated feelings of self-importance, an excessive need for admiration, and a diminished ability to empathize with others' feelings. So that is what the disorder contains. However, in what I just described, there can also be people who don't have the personality disorder in full, but show those similar traits. Number one, love at first sight is one of the signs that you should be looking for because they want to put you in a position where you feel it's most necessary to do whatever they want you to do at that very moment, however they want you to do it. If we put ourselves in the mind of the man when he's sitting out on the date in front of you, assuming he's not trying to build a relationship with you, think about this logic. If I want her to be sped up in our relationship, take things to the ultimate level, which would be sleeping with her. I need to get her to believe in a narrative that, oh my God, our relationship is all about love at first sight. As soon as we laid our eyes on each other, we felt this magical connection in our souls, despite not knowing each other. And we were going to be together forever. I just knew that the moment I saw you. And so now that we're in this relationship, we might as well already be husband and wife, even though we're not. It's a beautiful narrative for you to believe in because it's the same narrative you've been watching in your Disney princess movies. It's the same narrative you've been watching in your teen dramas. So a great, awesome, smart, intelligent narcissist is going to come to you and immediately try to get you to believe in the narrative of love at first sight. Why? Because the moment you believe in that narrative, we can begin building things at breakneck speed. What's that going to do to you? Even if you don't feel that, right? You're going to feel guilty for not feeling that or thinking that, right? And you're going to start to feel like what? Like something's wrong with you. No narcissist is going to want you to start believing in what is logical and what makes sense. They're only going to try to get you to believe in what they want you to believe in. And while simultaneously getting you to question yourself because it makes it that much easier to get you to believe in whatever they want you to believe in. Clue number two is guilt tripping. They want to guilt trip you and make you feel like it's your fault when they did something wrong to you. So for example, if I'm a narcissist and I want to guilt trip you and give you this fear that you're a bad person for standing up for yourself. And let's say you're getting tired of me flopping on dates. And one day I ask you to hang out and I tell you that we're going to meet at 3 p.m. And then I don't show up at your house or text you about going out together until it's 5 p.m. And I expect that when I start coming to your place at 5 p.m. that you'll just be ready and we'll go out to wherever I plan to go to, even though our plan was for 3 p.m. And you don't come out because you're choosing to actually have some self-respect. I then go and tell you, hey, how could you, how dare you? not come out with me and not spend this time with me. Look at all I went through to get to here and be here for you. And then when you don't answer, when you don't respond, I tell you, how could you abandon me? How could you leave me when all I wanted to do was treat you right? And I had this going on and that going on. And you know about my situation with my mom and my situation with my family. And then all of a sudden you're crying too, because you're like, damn, I feel bad for having standards. I feel bad for setting expectations. And you literally end up saying, you know what? I apologize to you for having self-respect. How silly of me. Walk all over me. I shouldn't dare to speak up for myself. Okay, that's what you do. A narcissist wants to get you to believe in the idea that the problems you're facing in your relationship, it's all about you and what you're doing wrong. It has nothing to do with them. 
they tell you or convince you that you taking a step back and withdrawing is abandoning them and you're a bad person for abandoning them. Now you have went from love at first sight and all the love bombing. Now you're literally in fear of leaving them because you're in fear of how horrible you'll feel as a person if you walk away from them. Number three, exes from hell. You can use to spot a narcissist on the very first date. You'll get a lot of insight. You perk your ears up. You start asking about the last relationship or the most recent ones. Oh, you'll learn a lot about them without even having to experience it with them on the first date or any date in general. And you start asking him, hey, you know, what was your last relationship like? Why did it end? Or what were just some of the things that weren't working out in the relationship? And then he proceeds to tell you, ha, ha, what wasn't working out? So, Buckle up. Do you have 10 hours? Let me tell you. So, first of all, she's the worst human on earth. All she does all day, nag me. I'm sitting here. I'm trying to work. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to do that. She's complaining about everything. She's coming in. She's checking my phone. She's checking the TV. All she does is make my life a living hell. Oh my God, she's the worst. And then you sit there and you go, okay, yeah, I understand. But, you know, is that it was all her? Like everything. Oh, I... When I tell you, I would wake up in the morning and I would just beg her, please, honey, can we have a good day today? I, all I wanted was a little bit of peace. I tried my absolute hardest. You know I gave her $10,000, don't you? I was going to be bankrupt and I gave her my last 10000 She took the bills and she slapped me in the face with it. Can you believe that? Okay, and the stories are going to sound a lot like that. When you're hearing it, you're going to think, damn, what a horrible person that you dated. I'm so sorry for you that you had to go through that and you're going to notice a pattern when he talks about that ex or he talks about the relationship before that or any relationship with anyone they're not even going to be able to see themselves as being a villain or being someone that does something wrong everything in their mind will be justified so if you're upset about something I did to you or something I said to you, that's not my fault because I didn't intend to upset you by saying that thing. So you're not coming out on the date and saying, are you a narcissist? Explain to me if you're a narcissist by telling me about how you treated your ex, right? It's just about asking him to explain his relationship and he'll be more inclined to explain his relationship from the perspective and the mind frame that he's already in in a way that makes him sound like the hero and makes her sound like the absolute villain that only does horrible things. Think about this logically as well. If he is describing all of his ex-girlfriends this way, what do you think is going to happen if you eventually become his ex-girlfriend? He's going to describe you the exact same way. Number four is something I call availability aggression. A narcissist will always get upset if you are trying to do anything for yourself that doesn't allow him to have access to you whenever and in whatever moment that he wants to have access to you. When you don't want to see them or spend time with them or you just have other responsibilities that you can't just drop everything you're doing in that moment to see him and spend time with him, he's going to get really, really, really upset. You'll notice this with the guys that show these type of narcissistic personality traits. He's just going to straight up call you or text you and want to hang out with you in the next five minutes. And if you're not, he's going to be really upset. And once again, kind of like we talked about before, he's going to guilt trip you by making you feel like there's something wrong with you that you don't want to see him right now this second. Or you don't ever make time for him or you're, this is a great one that guys love to say, you're not taking this serious when he tries to make it seem like I'm taking you more serious than you're taking me, then what happens to you? You start to feel like, well, I guess maybe I should do more. So I should allow you to come see me at 3 a.m. at night. I should allow you to call me out of the blue and pull up on me in the next five minutes. I should scramble like a chicken with my head cut off, running around trying to be make things happen in 15 minutes so that you can be able to come over and see me right when you want to come over and see me. So I always advise you the best thing to do is to do nothing because then he's going to have to put forth the effort. And a narcissist or even someone with narcissistic personality traits will definitely not want to do that. And a lot of guys will do this because they know if you're weak 
or weak minded, it's easy to manipulate you and, and pressure you to get you in a position where it's like, as soon as I want to see you, I expect you to want to see me and be ready to see me. Number five is a narcissist is going to at all costs avoid apologies. Our narcissist wants you to believe in the idea that the problem is you. You're the reason things are going wrong. You're the reason this relationship isn't what it's supposed to be. It's you. You're the issue. You're the problem. And apologizing would mean that he would have to admit that he's the problem. That's the last thing a narcissist is going to want to do. That, that's like eating glass. So what they're going to do instead is they're going to circumvent, which just means go around having to apologize you, but they're going to use and be strategic in getting access to you in a way that doesn't require them to first apologize to you. So let's say for the sake of example, me and you are in a talking stage and we're having a disagreement one day and the disagreement starts to escalate. It gets a little bit more heated. And then all of a sudden I start calling you crazy names. I'm calling you B words. I'm, I'm talking so crazy to you, talking so disrespectful to you that you end up bursting out. You're crying, you're bawling your eyes out, you go home like you're super upset. And I know you're upset and I know how, why and how I upset you. Rather than me apologizing for upsetting you, I'm going to blame it on you because I'm going to say that you are the problem and you upsetting me is what made me say those things. Let's say next week though, we are supposed to go to a party where we both share some mutual friends and I know the person who's throwing the party and you know the person who's throwing the party. So rather than me acknowledging through text or call you and having a conversation with you and apologizing for what happened i'm just gonna wait until i see you at the party you're drunk and i know that if i come up to you at that party and i just say something like yo so are you still mad at me yo we should be cool now we cool now that you're gonna feel so pressured to acknowledge me and speak to me because now i'm catching you in person that i can get us to laugh about it or for you to just say i guess it's water under the bridge it's not that big of a deal and because you couldn't set the boundary and say wait 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 you're not going to get access to me and have me start chatting and talking to you like it's normal just because you're seeing me at this party no you wronged me you crossed the boundary you don't get to have access to me now just because you're seeing me at this party. I, you still have no access to me. And a lot of times narcissists are going to do whatever it is, whether it's got, they got to tell jokes, they got to just come up to you straightforward. They do whatever they need to do to go around apologizing to you. It's part of the reason why I tell you, if you're taking a step back and withdrawing from a man, you should be anticipating the places that he could possibly see you or come across you by not actually planning to see you. Number six, text bombing. When he wants to contact you, whether it be because he wants to ask you a message or, you know, he just wants to communicate with you overall, he will text you or in some cases he'll call you when he is ready to speak to you. If you do not answer in the first two to three minutes of him texting you when he is ready to communicate with you, he'll spam you with text messages and even phone calls until you respond to him because it's not okay for you to be doing anything with your life when he is ready to communicate and talk to you in that moment and you'll also notice that in conjunction with the fact that when he is not ready to communicate or talk to you you will barely ever hear from him anytime you need something he's very very slow to communicate but anytime he needs something, his expectation is of you that you will immediately respond to him in that moment. How dare you is what they're feeling in their mind. How dare you do anything with your life that requires you to not be paying your full and utter attention to me? Because if you don't give me that answer right now, there's going to be a problem. You know what the, where the problem stems from? The problem stems from you. And number seven, you'll notice that they become very uncomfortable with the idea of your growth. When you start talking about growth or you start talking about bettering yourself, making your life better. <laughs> that's like saying a bad word. How dare you? Because if you start investing in yourself, What's going to happen is maybe you'll grow to the point where you realize you're actually not doing anything for me. And so someone with nar narcissistic personality traits is going to be discouraging you anytime you try to even mention 
growth in your life. It's so frustrating to them. The idea that you're going to start doing things for yourself. God forbid you have some sort of independence. God forbid you have some self-respect and are willing to walk away from things that don't serve you anymore. <gasps> in order for my narcissistic personality to be able to dominate you and suppress everything that you want for yourself because I want you weak. I want you focused on me. I want you thinking that you're the problem. I want you docile. And the only thing I ever want you to think is how horrible of a person you are so you can only be focused on fixing and adjusting your behavior and basically being on a hamster wheel where you're constantly thinking you're the problem, so you gotta do more to fix the problem, and when you fix the problem, I get more of what I want, but then I don't tell you that I actually got what I want from you, I just make you continuously feel worse about yourself, so you'll continuously try to fix the problem. I'm just gonna try to give you an example, maybe some of you have been through this or not. If you start talking too much about the idea of wanting to lose weight, especially you as a woman, go to the gym, get in the best shape of your life, really take care of your body. A narcissist is going to try to tell you, why would you want to go to the gym? Why would you want to work out? You want to be like all these IG models with their clothes half off? He'll try to convince you that you going to the gym and trying to get a tighter body and a better body is because you want to be a hoe.